Namaskar. Welcome to episode number 154 of Daily Global Insights with Sri and Sri. In US news, the fallout from Biden address to both houses continues. Eric Grayton says Joe Biden is out of touch with core American values. Your thoughts, sir? Well, I think my thoughts are uh, Eric Grattan is a classic example. He's an ex-Democrat, uh, then subsequently became a Republican, former governor of Missouri. Uh, he spells out, I picked out among several people from Lindsey Graham and so on and so forth, who has talked about lack of uh, uh, Biden's lack, lack of touch with the core American values in, in his comments and address. But Eric uh, very categorically, very clearly spells out that somehow... Um, he has forgotten, Mr. Biden has forgotten uh, what America is, what American values are, for him to stand up um, and, you know, make uh, such profuse comments, and especially uh, endorsing Nancy Pelosi um, in terms of the rationale as to why she pushed certain programs through. Uh, I think that stands out and it puts the whole thing in, in, in bad light. Um, then he goes back and, you know, this is always the case, the flip-flop, he goes and subsequently said, I never meant Americans to be racist, I never meant them to be discriminatory and all these kinds of stuff, but by then the damage is done. And White House defense spending ideas that dwarf 2009 bailout, Biden tax hike would devastate small businesses and Biden quietly preparing for food stamp increases without the approval of Congress. Something as momentous as that, why would he want to do an end run around Congress, sir? After all, I don't want any fellow American to go hungry. But at the same time, if you have an unmitigated access to illegals to enter, I don't care what they want to think. I think of them as illegals. Someone who enters the country illegally is an illegal. So that's my take, sir. What, do you, what are your thoughts? Uh, Biden has spent 39 years in the Senate. Um, I don't know what his state of health right now is, but it's very clear that there is, uh, he is in no position to uh, discuss debate uh, with, with, uh, with, uh, with the Congress or with the Senate in terms of getting his, uh, you know, in terms of getting his policies done. So he's using the simple technique. He's using two techniques. One, He's using the technique of executive orders. So everything is an executive order. He doesn't need to explain. I told you, in just you, you touched on immigration. In immigration alone, he has passed 74 orders, right? 74 orders, executive orders. The second, he has thrown to wind the fiscal discipline. And that is why we're going to have, in a very narrow span of time, six trillion dollars of infusion within four months, within three to four months. Uh, we had 1.9 trillion dollars getting in. We have a two trillion dollars infrastructure plan that's getting discussed. And then we have a 1.8 trillion dollars, uh, the American uh, Child Rescue or Child Act um, that is pending for approval, which is all welfare programs one trillion dollars by way of um, uh, the the child 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 credits, and then the expanded eight hundred billion dollars for child care and so on. So this basically says to you uh, that he has no fiscal and he's working to uh, to a, a progressive agenda. This is what Eric Greitens means by saying he has forgotten the core values uh, which make up United States. And worse, as you rightly said, we can feed what. We have here, we have issues to address, and we have neighborhoods to address. We are defunding the police, but we want illegal migrants to come into the country, violating the COVID and violating the basic security norms. Only Biden and the progressives understand this mad rationale behind these policies. And in the corruption news, Hunter Biden continues to hold a stake in equity firm co-owned by China Central Bank. When asked, the White House spokesperson said that Hunter has not had time to unwind his positions. Doesn't sound like a very convincing explanation. He was supposed to have wound it down within the first month or something like that. Sir, what is going on, sir, in your opinion? What is going on is that memory is shot. Um, his computer has been found, so they have stopped that investigation. Uh, this Kenitals LLC, where he is the sole owner, uh, has a 10% stake in the uh, the China 
uh, owned a private equity fund. Uh, it continues the stake, uh, whole stake in that uh, in 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 the entity, and on top of that, you have aggressive policy being pursued by Mr. Biden against China. It will be foolhardy to think that it would have no consequences in terms of the Hunter Biden's position in uh, in in the interest that he holds uh, in 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 a China owned. Uh, Bank of China owned fund. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's uh, it's appalling. It's appalling that there is no accountability. Uh, you know, within the remit of the president of the United States, not anybody holding up uh, President uh, Biden for this. And FBI spied on Trump and Giuliani iCloud chats during the impeachment hearings. That is shocking. He was still the president at that time, wasn't he? Well, you know, I think. Um, uh, and probably FBI and CAA play a different tune. Um, if you recall, uh, December 18th, uh, uh, John Ratcliffe, uh, he was the DNI at that point of time. Uh, he was supposed to table a report which states that was there a state, was there a, a election, uh, material interference. election interference in the conduct of the elections by the, any foreign power. If that is the case, then you can set aside. Many, some of the intelligent agency uh, members opposed that report. Okay, he did not, he was gracious enough not to mention, but it would be renegade or foolish to think that it was not some members of FBI and CIA who are part of that committee. So there's no surprise here. Recall going back, leading up to the election, that President Obama and even uh, Susan Rice, who is holding a very important position, who was a member of the National Security Council at that point of time, was supposed to be um, eavesdropping on uh, Trump campaign, plus also some of the members of uh, the Trump committee uh, with regard to the election strategy. So there is something, uh, you know, fundamentally not adding up. And that trend seems to have continued. There's one more incident that occurred over the weekend, which is which is called made it con con unconstitutional, which is namely raid in New York uh, into the house of Mr. Giuliani uh, to investigate whether he has any Russian or Ukrainian uh, connections. And neighbors allege that cops avoid responding to calls near George Floyd Square. Is this a place in uh, Minneapolis, sir? It is, it is, it is. And uh, there's that area where he was, um, um, uh, uh, you know, where the incident occurred. Uh, so it's called as the square. Um, given the volatile and given the provocative statements that come out. So there was an incident uh, which is um, a slashing um, incident that was going on. That's recorded. Uh, maybe, you know, um, we can also put that video up, whether YouTube will put it up, we don't know, given the community guidelines, uh, where the people 911 calling and the cops basically saying, look, you know, this is a no entry zone by the cops. So if you come one block, this lady is saying, I'm getting beaten up and you're asking me to step out one block. I'm, I don't know, I'm not in a position to move, but you're asking me to come out one block uh, so I can be rescued. So this is... Uh, this is another incident of the many of these incidents uh, that we are seeing around the country uh, where there is a rapid sporting time. And Senate Republicans criticize 1619's divisive nonsense in a letter to Education Secretary. James Clyburn, Democrat from South Carolina, says that schools will produce ignorant people if they listen to McConnell push against the 1619 project. Senate Republicans question White House political interference in census numbers. Now, 1619 has become another one of those lightning rods, isn't it? 1619 has become as part of the broad racial theory or racial equality theory or racial, um, uh, what you call, um, uh, theory that, base, uh, that lays down some of the, uh, this is effectively preparing the ground, want to educate the people that you all have committed uh, some crimes and sins or you are historically there is a crime and crime and uh, incorrectness. There, there is a whole paragraph on this. What what is constitute what constitutes 
uh, this whole 1619. It came out as a series. We have covered what it is, and it was banned subsequently, but these people have taken it up. So now James Clyburn to stand up and st state that, you know, people should, uh, people should. This is going to become part of the education, that this is going to become part of the school education. So this is what the Republicans are objecting to, to which Tyburn says that if this is not written into the educational system, then people will grow to be very ignorant. Adjacent to the same thing that the census, this was, you remember that uh, there was a set of laws and uh, um, uh, Trump contested, which is uh, some of the illegal aliens, some of the other people should not be counted uh, in, uh, in, the, in the census data. And uh, again, Mr. Biden passed an executive order reversing that decision. So there's going to be a whole swag of people uh, who are going to be included. And uh, so all these things uh, point to the fact that there is a concerted effort um, to, to, to change the composition um, of the communities that we live in. And uh, in other news, Kamala Devi Harris, Vice President, will lead the National Space Council. Space, the final frontier. Yes, uh, you know, she's uh, now, she's a wizard on boundary. She's a wizard on the climate change. Now she is going to preside our Space Council. As she said, when we think of conquest of the moon, we will be there and we will hoist a flag. So therefore, now she would be leading and directing the Space Council programs with an oversight. And, um, you know, good wishes and best luck to uh, the new uh, vice president. Space czar. <laughs> yeah, the space czar. And in Indian news, GST collection of April touches an all-time high of 1.4 lakh crores. Output of eight, crore indust eight core industries surged at a 32-month high of 6.8% in March, and some of the core industries are coal, crude oil, natural gas, refinery products, fertilizers, steel, cement, and electricity, and government targets to build highways worth 15 lakh crores in the next two years, and exports jump to US 30 billion in April. Trade deficit now stands at 15.4 billion. So all these Excellent data coming out of India, but maybe there'll be a bit of a hiccup after this. Uh, we, the, ex, there is an expectation of a hiccup in the month of April. Data is out. Uh, there is the May data. Now, if we take a look at uh, some of these sectors, uh, they are probably many of these factories are not in urban areas. They are probably in the rural areas or semi-urban areas. They're not right in your city centers. So most of the COVID impact has been in the urban. It's only in the recent times it's begun to spread. Um, so the fact that these sectors have, have grown is a good indication that the manufacturing is working. Just to contrast, the, uh, the same sectors contracted 2.5% in February, whereas it has grown 6.8% in March, which showed that the economy was trying to get its way back uh, into momentum uh, before this uh, this pandemic took its uh, took its toll so we'll take a look at the may may data now the other thing is that the gst continues uh, the latest news breaking out is that uh, there is a, some kind of a moratorium or some uh, compassionate consideration is being given so we may again see may numbers to be slightly different obviously if you're manufacturing and exports have increased uh, manufacturing has increased, then, then definitely there has to be proportionate increase in the GST. That's what those numbers reflect. The most important message here is take the infrastructure plan of United States and take the infrastructure plan of India in by way of allocation of capital to specific projects. So whenever I mention this, people sometimes don't understand. When you say you are putting one trillion dollars against, then you have to define one trillion dollars towards what specific projects and what outcomes you can begin to see. You can calculate plus or minus. India has done an exceptional job in terms of its infrastructure build out. So it's a very positive thing that is coming out. 
Um, the next two years, he has allocated huge amount, the Modi government has allocated huge amount of capital um, as it probably comes out of uh, his term and moves for the elections, you know, he has something to talk about. And in global news, Iran, Biden are inching towards a nuclear deal with sanctions. And uh, Biden denies 7 billion prisoner deal claims. U.S. bases in Afghanistan hit by rocket fire as troops commence withdrawal. Are these, you know, all these are happening in and around Iran. Sir, uh, what is this $7 billion deal, sir? Uh, there is a prisoner, you know, the prisoner, uh, set of prisoners who are uh, held up in Iran, uh, the American, uh, Iranian and American. Uh, so there is a side deal that is being cut, it is believed. Uh, there's a saying in journalism, there is no smoke without fire. So there's some cash transaction involved. So people have raised a hue and cry and say, hey, you know, is the seven billion dollars payout to Iran is uh, is uh, is the uh, the prisoner swap out? So that's the first question that is being posed. Second, I think we discussed it again uh, last week that they have continued to make concessions to secure the Iran deal at any cost. So. Europeans are gung-ho and mad about cutting a deal with Iran, notwithstanding the fact that the, Ira the enrichment of the uranium has crossed the threshold levels. It's almost like saying Obama was right. Every policy of Obama, I am going to make sure because I'm going to make sure because I have all his members of the team. I myself was a member of the team. Whether it's good or bad, I'm just going to make sure that I put it right. So when you uh, take that type of an approach, there's going to be several casualties. And one of these big casualties is going to be not only the Iran deal, but the Afghan deal that you alluded to, which is namely, we're going to quit. Okay, fine, you quit. Already you're beginning to see um, the, the impact of that. And North Korea wants US of a very grave situation over Biden's speech. What's the relationship here? How is North Korea affected? Uh, North Korea, along with China, North Korea was the other country uh, that was mentioned in his speech, which is to say that the North Korea is a rogue regime. Uh, its nuclear program and ambitions have to be stopped and stalled at any cost. And we are prepared to take as appropriate actions as we believe we need to do uh, to make sure that the North Korea is contained. So North Korea, he's saying, you, you know, you be, better be careful as to what you're attempting to do. Uh, you'll it'll, it'll be faced with a set of consequences. So I think that is the context of this, um, of this comment from the North Korean leader. He was quiet. Uh, you know, he was given his due things. Even he stopped firing his little toy missiles into, he was firing missiles at Japan. He was trying to fire missiles at Hawaii. He was trying to fire missiles into Pacific. He was doing all kinds of things uh, leading up to <clears throat> the Trump, and then they had that meeting and they had the summit in Singapore. I don't know what happened, but, um, you know, Mike Pompeo was on record to say that his one regret is not to cut a deal with, not to have signed a deal with North Korea when uh, these skirmishes started to break out. And uh, the Bademia of back channel talks, Henry Kissinger wants of a US China <laughs> Armageddon. Sridharji, your thoughts? Oh, my. I, you know, this is, uh, you know, Obama's elder statesman. This is the man who cut this WTO deal. So somehow he has to figure out and say, hey, you know, cut a deal with the Chinese. Don't. And what's the deal to cut? I mean, they're pretty much running, running the riot around the world, not just in, uh, not just in the United States. Uh, one of the most disasters of uh, Henry Kissinger's, uh, you know, foreign policy um, uh, accomplishments are uh, failures, if one has to say. So he thinks that uh, he, he keeps on ratcheting up his anti. Uh, if you don't cut a deal and don't respect China, uh, you can expect uh, a big boomerang. And uh, viewers, those of you who don't understand Hindi, Bade Mia is big man, big man of big cha back channel talks, <laughs> Henry Kissinger. <laughs> And Philippines vows to continue maritime patrols in South China Sea. China says its carrier group concluded exercises in the South China Sea. Japan courts Central and Eastern Europe with an eye on EU Indo-Pacific strategy. This is something new, Sridharji. 
Well, I think the, uh, um, I don't know whether Japan has been sent on a mission uh, to be the new czar. So there is no quad. There is probably um, a new global Indo-Pacific strategy emerging. So to send uh, uh, Mr. Um, the, the foreign minister um, to uh, Moritz, I think it's Morisu, um, I forget the last name, uh, the, uh, the Japanese foreign minister, to send the Japanese um, foreign minister on a mission to Bosnia, Slovenia, uh, and the Central European countries, and to meet with um, uh, EU uh, to basically say, hey, you know, the, um, uh, they all should become part of uh, the Indo-Pacific security apparatus and also your trade deal, because 54% or 56% of, um, of, of, of uh, the trade is going to flow through uh, through 56% um, of GDP is, uh, is in that region, 76% of the resources uh, flows through South China Sea. It is of strategic importance. You all have to be part of the jamboree rather than the four specific countries which were tasked uh, to manage this. And Spain has charged Alec Jihadis over online threats to French citizens. If I understand this correctly, Sridharji, it appears that these people were sitting in Spain and threatening French citizens? They were. Uh, Spain has, has had its problems uh, either from Morocco or from, you know, Tunisia and mostly from, you know, Morocco and that side of the, uh, of the, uh, uh, the continent. And, uh, you know, France has been going after um, and putting moratorium and uh, going after some of the uh, um, specific segments of the community and not being in compliance. We reported also an incident of a uh, police women being, uh, you know, knifed and uh, the police be people being arrested. So uh, Spain is a EU as a whole and, and Spain uh, in specific as it relates to this is very cognizant and watching the uh, social media sites. The point that we're trying to uh, make out is that there is a growing tension brewing even in Europe. And in COVID news, United States COVID uh, claims will accelerate calls that the vaccination program has been successful. India and Japan deal with dual mutant variants and the numbers across the countries, US, Brazil and uh, world battles, all uh, everywhere we are trying, we are seeing that there is some control except of course India who also I think the light is beginning to come um, uh, from the end of the tunnel. And now all the things are now more logistics based, like being able to get the vaccines in right places, oxygen to who is needing it, quarantine, do selective lockdowns. So, sir, overall, what is your thoughts on how last week was under COVID? Uh, overall, uh, United States uh, has made very good progress. When, when you look at the top five countries, the top five countries that make up are United States, India, Brazil, um, then you have Mexico, uh, sorry, Brazil, then you have France, uh, then you have uh, Turkey, Russia. So these are the, uh, you know, the top seven, eight countries uh, which make up the COVID list. I would say Europeans are beginning to have a better control. Asia still, the numbers are smaller, but they are, you know, relatively uh, growing. But Japan seems to be in the top of that list and they're trying to manage it uh, quite adequately. Um, then you have, well, the problem with China and Japan is that there's a lot of uh, uh, tourist flow because of the Olympics and all other kinds of trade and business activities. So though they have shut down, so, you know, many of, the, many of the provinces in the country itself, they still, uh, uh, you know, rise. Uh, rising and may, yeah, some of these countries also suffer from inadequacy of the supply of vaccines. I mean, there's a global shortage of vaccines. Um, there's a theory which says that the well-developed nations, such as uh, Britain and even Germany, and but more specifically, United States, are hoarding vaccines and depriving many nations that are in dire circumstances. Um, and then, of course, you heard. Uh, uh, President Biden say America comes first, you know, only when we have done, we can give it to the rest of the world. And you saw that him responding to that criticism. 
So that is the general uh, uh, the, the general trend is that there seems to be semblance of normalcy returning. As far as India is concerned, uh, it's like a dichotomy, which is namely um, there there is a positive trend in terms of the the number of people recovering relative to the number of pe- number of cases that is getting added every day. Um, the net addition is uh, between the new cases, which is around the 350,000 plus mark, <clears throat> which in the last day has come down to around 292. India also crossed the highest recoveries any given day, which was yesterday, uh, day before yesterday, was 300,000 plus, 300,000 plus in any one in on a given day, it's the highest. But when you talk to a lot of people, there's still issues located around specific cities, and which is around the oxygen supply, availability of a hospital bed and care and so on. I My observation is many of these people don't need to panic and they can delineate between those uh, who need attention, such as those whose oxygen levels have come down relative to the other people who can be treated from hospital or from home with medication given. Um, you know, I, I'm not talking out of context, both me and my wife uh, suffered COVID and my wife managed it from home, whereas due to my complexities, you know, I myself was uh, hospitalized and treated. So, you know, one has to make a delineation. I think that is missing very badly. Uh, as you rightly said, logistics seems to be falling into place. The entire world is coming and the corporates have uh, have raised their hands and said that, you know, we are here to support. It's very, I mean, you know, uh, Mahindra has, uh, uh, is making mobile um, oxygen and then delivering it. Adani has converted his school into um, 100, 150,000, 125,000 bed facility, which is a permanent uh, care. Um, Ambani has gone to Jamnagar to, to personally supervise the oxygen man. So all these points out to, uh, you know, there is a concerted attempt to solve the problem. But still, one of the other uh, challenges that India faces is this political bickering at a human cost. You know, if you happen to be non-BJP, then, you know, you, this is the time to settle scores. So you begin to complain rather than saying, you know, how do I solve this human problem uh, to your own constituent within your state? But I believe that uh, the general belief is that by mid-May, um, India will begin to win to turn the corner. That's to some extent U.S. is endorsing by saying that there is a very positive momentum behind um, the recovery process around COVID. But having said that, this in many believe that this looks like a more a bio warfare. Uh, you know whether it will cease or whether there's something that's going to prop up. Time will tell. And in markets news, major averages stumbled on Friday, capping busy week of tech earnings. S&P fell 0.7%. DJIA dropped more than 185 points. NASDAQ fell by 0.8%. The S&P and DJIA are up almost 11% for the year, and NASDAQ is about 8%, and unemployment will be the focus in the week ahead. Sir, now this year has been impressive for stocks. There is a main is a main reason that money has nowhere else to go. Of course, uh, uh, the um, once your consumption uh, is consumption needs are met, uh, basically you have to put the money in uh, into uh, as an investment and savings. Uh, if you recall, in the personal expenditure uh, surveys, people said they would be putting close to fifty percent of uh, the the bailout or the COVID relief money that they're getting by way of checks, uh, they would be putting into savings rather than into you know retail spend. So it's a free money. Um, you don't need to work for it. Somebody else is paying for it. And uh, you are beginning to see the flow of that money into this, uh, into this what we call as a pandemic company. There, there, there's, a two, there's a new definition. Pandemic companies and mainstream economy companies. The mainstream economy companies are what you see in uh, Dow Jones and Dow Jones or DJIA at SNMP. Then you have the um, the pandemic uh, related d- disruptive transformation or transformative uh, uh, companies, which are the tech companies. They are in the Nasdaq. 
So you begin to see the Nasdaq, uh, you know, making its uh, making uh, you know made a significant way in the last two years during the period of pandemic. So that's the uh, scenario. Uh, my last point is, which we shouldn't forget, Bitcoin had at four thousand dollars, four thousand dollars. It's at fifty six point fifty six thousand seven hundred and zero nine. Uh, so this is our very famous, you know, crypto that keeps growing up. People keep throwing stones at it, even the mainstream market. You know, Munger said, Bitcoin? Bitcoin is what? It's another mongrel. So, therefore, you know, but this number keeps going up in, in, in an astronomical manner. Well, someone in uh, the investing circle for Bitcoin must have heard what we said, that it makes sense for the Bitcoin to actually go up than down. Maybe that is the hope here. We don't know. We, we certainly are here to just give you the information. We're not telling you to buy anything or lose anything. So uh, take it with that pinch of salt. And viewers, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We are completely dependent, dependent on you and your support to you know not only watch it yourself, but to refer our program to your friends and family. You can also join our membership and, and it will give us more flexibility to give you even better quality professional programming. We are also lining up new slate of specialists and they would all be glad to address 150,000, 200,000, quarter million uh, subscribers, at which point it becomes like a wide audience. And Sridharji, thanks as always. I'm sure now you've got your strength back fully. We shall strive even more hard to try and bring you state-of-the-art news. Remember, we tell you what is going to happen, not just tomorrow, but the day after, and the day after, and the day after. Namaskar. Namaskar, and have a good Monday, and we are here for bringing about some exciting news as the week advances.